counter except Caudal. Um And I think that's something that both teams will be very wary of. Medusa has not lost this tournament, I think. It's been pretty convincing in all of its games. It's a very strong pick in captain's mode still, so you take a hero like that and you transfer it into a more limited hero pool and it can Ooh. really shine. Uh, Medusa is not going to get ignored this game. It's 100% picked or uh, I'm pretty sure Techies is a good Let good me refute Medusa a few there. things before we move on. Not only has Medusa lost, it has lost by the hands of to Yappy see. in secret with his amazing Zeus Nimbus. That is correct, actually. It did lose. Empire Control. lost. Incorrect. So if you don't want to pick right. Medusa, this is the one to... Uh... Because there's no Zeus counter. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? Yes. <laughs> this is the good one. Anyway, yeah, Tech, I've been watching a lot of pubs recently on, uh, you know, creeping on the players. Secret loves that techies. Do they? I, uh, you're just saying random things. You just watch, no I know you just rewatch your own pubs playing techies. <laughs> but sometimes I change my name to puppy when I watch them. <laughs> It's if we cool. see a techies, then I, I'm going to feel pretty bad for Mod over there. <laughs> it's going to be a long game. <laughs> Trent's going to have a, the dream job, though. He sure. doesn't need to analyze anything. He just says, hey, techies is in the game. It's going to be a long one, guys. Yep. Just repeat that in 60 different ways. So we got a Shadow Shaman it's still in the pool. That's probably going to get picked. Yep. First pick, I Good would think. Mm -hmm. How about Slark? Mm -hmm. huh? He's been all over the place this tournament. He's been in every single one, completely ignored. Is he really that bad still? He can be a good last pick in the I think. Or maybe even ninth pick could be good enough for ninth. Can you dark pact off stone gaze? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. That's pr I believe you have so. to time it at a certain point. Or is yeah, I, th time? I think you have to time it so that you're fully petrified when you proc. Because yeah. else, if you cast it before, I don't think you take off the build up. But I could be wrong. I mean, you'd think theoretically Slark would be good against Medusa, but I don't actually know. He used to be a pretty good hero against Medusa, but Medusa's pace has just been taken up. Like three notches Why? in the last year, just because of the mask of madness and stacking of ancients and, and damage talent and the and split, <laughs> the split shot being a passive. Now you're saying that's good? Yeah, it's pretty good. Oh, meanwhile, Slark has received zero buffs. As a matter of fact, he's only been nerfed. I think. Yeah, only nerfed. Tide. Oh my goodness! Don't want to give that to Fada. Of course, that's his nickname. Is Fada Boy because he plays that Tide Hunter and he just rolls up on folks. He is the biggest Tide Hunter I've ever seen back in the Dream Leagues. And they're probably going to give it to him again. Remaining. And we're not going to be seeing Ice 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 Taunt with Tide. No. Maybe he can find another hero. Let's go through the hero list and find which Taunt is the best available. And that's the one that Ice 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 will play. So, Jack, Pudge. what do you think about the <laughs> draft? Everything I said last <laughs> round was accurate, except for the haste. Actually, I very rarely will I... Sorry, Jack, if you had anything... Oh, who is the best taunt available? No! Like, God, no. You see this? I'm infecting everyone. <laughs> My last one! Uh, what's the best taunt? No! P P Pudge no. Is pretty... So Pudge, I, I would say, is not a good taunt because you can't move while you use it. So this is a great taunt is Jakiro. Jakiro's yeah. is pretty nice. Very good. Yeah. That might be the best, actually. I, mean, I think Tidehunters is the most iconic still. Yeah, but he's picked by Seek. We're talking about... Oh, the best for taunt, taunt counter. Yes. Oh. Great meta, guys. Thanks yeah. for this. I mean, Jakiro plays music. That has, I mean, in some ways, that, that's better than... Imagine music. if it didn't have a cooldown. Yeah, that's uh, the opposite, though. He plays classical music, which increases tough. the intelligence of the enemy team. Yes. That works with babies. I'm sorry, what? Yes. What were you saying? <laughs> Nothing. Okay. Uh, so... so mm. Hey, Death Prophet's in the pool, Slax. You think you should pick it? Can we just very quickly talk about why Tidehunter is actually a good first pick? Because this yes. hero never gets picked this early, generally. It has some pretty clear weaknesses as a very early pick, but it, there's, like, very few heroes in the pool that are actually good against Tidehunter in lane. Like, he has some bad matchups in Captain's mode that just aren't available here. So I think Secret just identified that that is the, the offlane pick that they like the most and that it's largely uncountered. And you see this response from... Uh, from Mineski is of support nature. They don't really have a core that can just shut out Tide completely, so they have to have supports that can be annoying for Tide. They grab both Jakiro and Pudge, both good heroes at that. Heroes are a problem for most safe laners. I, I see a Slark over there that sometimes teams will pick against it, and no, at least a BG, and there's also a Gyrocopter as well. So Here comes Medusa. If they take one of these themselves, it limits Mineski's options. Is there any way, if you pick Medusa, that you just you take Drow? Can he fit oh, that Drow in? Drow is still in too. Because Drow Medusa is pretty filthy. That is, that can be really good actually. That's not a bad point. Really? By what? What did? Can you yeah. say that again? I sorry, I got Please. carried. I got carried away. Okay. My bad. Gracious. Um, <laughs> Gracious. So they don't. I think they're just securing themselves here with the, or rather, they want a little bit more information. They might not pick Medusa yet, but it's a good way for them to protect themselves in case 
Mineski are setting up for it. Now they at least have some sort of solution to Mana Shield with the Mana Leak and Blinding Light combination for Staff. Um, and Secret can also try to turn this into a timing push lineup where they have Ravage, Tidehunter in front, and they get the Caudal Ags. And that is, we've seen in the past, this Caudal Ag, and it can be really oh, I terrifying. Rem I remember when that first came out, you, you talked about it yeah. nonstop for like a month. And then it got hey! bugged. Whoa! Right, I was third not expecting pick that Slark. That was not something. If we were going to see this, I was expecting last pick, if anything. Yeah, I think Very Slark right. has a couple of matchups that are not ideal. They're not awful, the ones that are in the pool, but maybe they're just even improving their tide further. Now they've avoided that Slark matchup that, uh, that Jack was mentioning could be a thing. So. Still, now, do you feel like Mineski, a bit of hubris on this one? They picked H put. H hub sorry? Hubris? Hubris? H hubris? That is how you say it. Hubris. Hubris? Hubris. Hubris. Yeah, hubris. I said it right. Okay. Why don't you come at me again, boy? <laughs> See what happens next. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, a punch? Didn't they just lose with this? And now they're going again? Hey, the, that's confidence. The other thing is, Stark is also really good against the remaining cores in this pool. So if you look at Wraith King, um, Alchemist, even Medusa herself, or these squishier kind of uh, agility cores like a Luna or a Gyrocopter, they, they all don't match up too well against Stark. So not only did they kind of protect that pick on their own, but it uh, creates a good matchup for them later that on. That is true. They still went for the Lunar regardless, but that's not the worst matchup for Slark. I think the worst core matchup in the pool here is actually Morphling, but I feel like if Mineski want that pick, they would take it on the 10th pick. Um, Ten seconds. So far, Secret's picks are actually not good against Morphling at all, but if they picked it now, they would have two response picks first remaining. to adjust with. And now that you have Luna, I find it hard to, to get the more fling as well. Sounds like a pretty bad pairing, to be honest. So, did you know, they go for the Death Prophet again? Is the question? No. 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 Here's no, what no. you do. Oh, no. They it's Tech. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, the crowd starts booing. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? That, that wasn't booing. That was groans. Oh. That was like, no. <laughs> oh. Can we do like a collected, <laughs> can everybody do that? No. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. That was right. disgusting. We, we, we can work on that for the final day. That, that's what the sound is like. Yeah. All right, so now that we've oh established yeah! that... Yeah. All right. I love me some Wraith King. This Ca is pretty good. Call like... Wraith King. Pretty yeah. nice lane. Wraith yes. King has a low cooldown stun, so with Chakra Magic, you can get multiple stuns off very easily, both in lane and in team fights. to secure that you have mana for the ultimate. Um, in addition to that, Wraith King can be a pretty good frontliner. And once again, if you want to go Caudal Ags push... Uh, they have a very tanky lineup, actually. And okay, now they have a really tanky line. Okay. There we go. There is the Medusa. So, yeah. What is Wraith King's position here? This is a position for Wraith King, I think. And a mid Medusa and safe lane start. Now that changes things okay. up a little bit. I was excited for a core Wraith King, but, but hey. I think it could have also been good as a core in this game, to be honest. He's a pretty good hero against Luna in the core matchup. You can summon skeletons to tank up Eclipse. You. Uh, obviously you have the second life if you tank Eclipse on your first one. Most cores are blown away by that and just die, unless they have BKB. Uh, it's a hero that can deal with Death Prophet someone can just run in at her, has a strong crit to kill, but they do choose to win. Oh, nice. I love this hero. How, do, how does Split Shot work against Egg if you're hitting somebody? Does it hit uh, the doesn't egg? hit the Egg, no. Okay. Hmm. The Egg is a ward. But if you hit the Egg, will it hit Hero? Yes. So it's still it's good. Should. Gentlemen, I'm going to need some predictions from you. Let's start things off with Cinderin so you guys can't just... Copy him, and we can get this over with quickly. Sooner, what are you thinking, buddy? I think it's 2-0. I like Secret Draft in this game. I think mm. they have very good cores, especially the Medusa. I see being a big problem to deal with for this Mineski lineup. Jack? Yeah, I'm also in favor of Secret. I thought their drafting was brilliant first, first getting the Tide, and then picking a Stark that counters a lot of these last options they got. They end up picking one of those two. So I thought their draft logic was awesome, and I think they're going to win this game. Too. I really like Death Prophet, guys. I go with Secret. Secret again. Well, it's uh, great that I'm the host because Mineski is taking this one easy peasy. Slark sucks. Phoenix is great. And let's head on over to our casters, Trent Pax and Mott. Hey, everybody. Albert Einstein. He looks really good. I love your hair, Mott. Thanks, man. Yeah, you, did you just do that today? I did. It's very presidential. Yeah, I tried. Yeah. yeah. I what, tried my best. What, what do you think about the, uh, the picks here? 
Well, that, you were that. talking about it. The support puppy Wraith King coming out here for Secret. Yeah, That's pretty I, I'm a little surprised. I thought maybe they close it out with like a Phoenix or something and just get like this overwhelming team fight. Uh, but it was instead the Medusa for the mid, mid one. one Medusa. Ooh. Yeah, that seems. Uh, he, he played pretty well, I hear, last game on the Amber Spirit. We'll see how he plays here in this game. Yeah, it's been a while since the old uh, support Wraith King, but uh, I don't think I'm quite as one sided maybe as the panel. I don't know. I feel like uh, the Mineski draft looks pretty solid to me. A little better around the times of the Death Prophet and actually get some things going with those exorcisms. Yeah, I mean, we, we, I mean, some people were groaning. You heard Shannon groan during the Death Prophet pick. So, I mean, some people didn't like it for sure, but we'll see if they can get something going here. It is game two, and uh, Mineski obviously one game away from elimination. They needed to do something here to get back into this one. And uh, some very interesting picks. Obviously, a lot of push coming out from the Mineski team. You have the Luna, you have the Jakiro, you have the Death Prophet. So, taking buildings might be easier this game than what we saw in the last game, Trent, I would yeah. assume. The, uh, I guess the support duo kind of suffers from the same problems once again, though. Uh, you had this idea of, remember when, like, when they actually hit the Disruptor, a glimpse into the hook, and the crowd's like, oh! And it's like, that's just two supports killing someone. Like, yeah. if, if it makes you go, oh! And like, it's a huge play every time, that's probably not a good sign for your support duo. Yeah. Uh, and once again, now we have hooks into like Ice Path, so it's uh, a little difficult to execute. And uh, the core Phoenix, this has been something that uh, I've heard discussed a few times in terms of like the best way to run this hero right now. So it seems like uh, some of the spammers feel like it's a little bit better in a core role rather than support. You can be a bit greedier with the spell amp. And well then tell me about the itemization. What do you think you would see out of an ice ice size Phoenix? Uh, I think the Midas is definitely still possible, and all the levels really help, right? It just get, builds you up in towards like that 40% XP gain, or you can, even better, you get the spell amp then into the uh, 60 fire spirits, right? So you get like a Midas in your veil and you're just amping everybody up. But uh, we'll have to see how uh, he wants to go about it. Yeah, we'll see how he can uh, handle this off lane. They're going to deal with Ace right now. They're going to try to take the rune. It looks like they're going to be successful in doing so. Ace not really trying to deal with this because the rest of his team is up at the top lane also contesting. So it's going to be two per side, it looks like. And this is going to be the Fata Tidehunter. Fata's had a great tournament so far, I would say. And uh, I think uh, this game as well, he'll do pretty well in this Tidehunter in this off lane role. Yeah, he'll be battling up against uh, basically the Phoenix Egg in terms of like team fight control. He's in a little bit of a battle wow, right this now. This is a lot of heroes. Okay, see you later. I'm out of here. There's no ice path, but they have the Lucid Beam, of course. <laughs> and Mushi will stop it, and Fata will go down and feed first blood away. Yep. That instant reaction to just TP out, unfortunately, a good uh, presence of mind for Mushi. Oh, but they meanwhile. will get the kill bottom onto Ice Ice Ice. So both offlaners are going down in the start of this game. Very interesting. Yeah, I mean, you're going for this like creep pull. It's very often they go target tied at level one anyway. You want to get him before he's nice and tanky, before yeah. he's the Kraken shell. Uh, but everyone wants to pull the waves right now uh, in Dota as an offlaner. So they just know he's going to try and make that little play and plenty of damage between those two supports. As we talked about uh, the core matchups on the panel, they were just saying that like not very many good options against tied. The support duo, they went for really high damage early on between the Jakiro and the Pudge, and it pays off there. Yep. And of course, going to Lunar, or rather the Lucid Beam. Miss out on a Lunar Blessing for a minute or two, but not the biggest deal, honestly. Um, and harassing back Ice 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 and then in the bottom lane, making sure Puppy can start har doing some damage here. He has Icarus Dive available, so it should, shouldn't be too much danger for the most part, but he is taking a lot of damage. This is the good thing about this hero. He does actually a lot of right-click damage at the beginning of the game, and he is just pushing this Phoenix out of lane. Puppy yeah. is just standing and delivering. And Ice 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 is forced to Icarus Dive away at the last second. And he only has three tangos to work with on top of all that. Yeah, there's no salve left here for him. Phoenix, of course, notoriously low armor. And so just a little melee support like this, little Wraith King, able to bully him quite a bit. Easy game, and his uh, life's not going to get any easier on the Phoenix either, right? You imagine, oh, there's a hook on a Yapsor nice on top. Nice hook. There's the dual ref. Yapsor in trouble. Diving deep is Mushi. Lucent Beam secures the kill, and that's just, you find that hook, it's that easy for Mineski. Nicely done there, but uh, no, I was going to say, I say, I say, if he actually gets an egg off, you can imagine this game. Uh, Ace, not really concerned about Fire Spirits, right? He can maybe just, uh, if he has to, he can ult to try to take down the egg to save the rest of his team. He can just purge off the Fire Spirits and there's no one else, no problem. So he's going to be needing that backer from the Jakiro on the actual Phoenix Egg ultis. As Yapsor is going to return top when Fata is surrounded. Yeah, he might be in trouble again. He wants to find jabs, but instead he's getting run at by Mushi as well as Ninja Boogie. Continuing to pump out the damage, the dual breath. Illuminate will come through, almost clips on the Ninja Boogie, but avoids it at the last moment. And uh, they just, I guess Yapsor just wants to be up here to keep uh, Fata as oh, safe hello, as possible. Oh, hello, Jabs. <laughs> yeah. Oh, missed the hooks. Very close. Meanwhile, right. bottom. They've got the Wraith Fire Blast. There's the Ikurish Dive away. And, I mean, at, at the very least, though, Ice 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 isn't getting much in this bottom lane. Two last hits for now. Even Fata's getting more, and he died earlier on in the game, so. I, I know our tournament theme is, like, the Revolutionary War and whatnot. I know we've gone back in time, but... 
mid lane is a 1v1. What is happening? Yeah, this Can you is, believe this? What is it's this actually world? just two heroes mid this whole time. I, I don't know what, what's going on We've now. done it. We've moved the map. Uh, Jab's top will deny himself. He wants to just head on back home. Let's see. Now that you've said that, I'm sure somebody will rotate mid, but for now it is just mid one versus Nana. I just wanted to remind them, you know. Okay. Yeah, it's good. Keep them on their toes. Well, that, that will be the 1v1 versus 1 matchup for now. Again, it, a lot of it is because they want to push out this Tidehunter and deal with, of course, the Phoenix in the bottom lane as well. And just a little bit of action, one to two is the score, and both safe laners just farming and, and doing pretty well. Both mid laners are farming and doing pretty well, so just not too much happening other than a couple of kills here and there across the map. Puppy, now that there's actually a few more levels on top of the Phoenix, can't really play quite as aggressive there. Instead, he's happier to just farm up a little bit with some pulls. Get some gold from self-dump on the boots, and uh, Fata also playing a little bit more aggressive here, too. So the supports have fallen off a little bit. They did their little bit of work there to create a little bit of breathing room for their carries, and then I guess we'll be watching for those rotations. Look for that first big eclipse from the Luna, and then Ace is just kind of trying to get to six, and without the support in lane, that is a little bit easier. So the the exorcism as well for Mineski. The push timing, I wonder, I mean, you, you wait for that level six, hopefully you have a couple of points into Liquid Fire, and then you start trying to take down towers. I mean... Do you want to try to push the tempo in this game as, uh, as Mineski try to get down as many towers as you possibly can in the beginning of the game? Yeah, I'd say so, right? They want to take some earlier fights, uh, especially if Ravage is ever down. That's probably when they're going to look to capitalize, so we'll be having those uh, little battles and timings between Ravages and Exorcisms and uh, just playing maybe in one lane with a Jakiro if Ninja Boogie gets a little bit of space and then the rest of the team can be elsewhere. Down bottom. That is a solo kill. kill. Ace just jumped in, got the pounce off, dark packs. Looks like the yeah, it was either still on cooldown for the dive or he was just a bit late. Top lane, hook there from the slow. Yeah, they've got him. They have the Lucent Beam available. Fata taking a lot of damage already. The Rot doing some work. This should be a kill. Fata not really getting any help. They rotate Puppy. There's not much he can do there. He has no. just to stand and watch. Had no mana ready there for the stun, so... Uh, Coddle can't really be reactive in those situations, and even the TPing Wraith King is a little... You know, it's not a Nyx Assassin or a Lion or something with an AoE stun. He just kind of shows up and can throw one skull at somebody. No real defensive sports, honestly, in this game. You have the super, the um, the Sunray rather later for the Phoenix, but that's neither here nor there. So I like his quick rotation, though. He just immediately heads in towards the mid lane, puts down a good ward, hasn't been spotted by anyone, and uh, continues his trek across the map here from Puppy. Ice 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 is having a pretty rough time in his bottom lane, let me tell you. He, he did get the Fire Spirits on Ace, but he's just going to back up, regen up a little bit. And... Look how aggressive he's playing, though. Uh, but now it's all for naught as yeah. Slark gets six. And let me just regen real quick, and okay. Uh, see if they can force the dive here, right into Puppy. Puppy is, a nice he came play. all the way around. It. They've got it, and that's an easy kill for Ace. He does it on his own. He gets the pounce off, he gets an auto attack, the dark packs. It's more than enough to get the kill. At the back up just in case, but not even needed. So Ice, Ice, Ice getting a couple of deaths in that bottom lane, not getting much in terms of CS. Fada still 20 CS. He's getting close to 6 as we speak. Mid one and Moon, aka Nana, they're doing about evenly in this mid lane. 27 CS for both of them. Jabs hasn't found too much, only a couple of kills in the top lane, but that's about it. It's a 3 to 3 kill score for now. Feels like it's going pretty well for Secret. Ninja Boogie's gonna go for the TP, the Illuminate's gonna come through, but no way to cancel that TP as there's no Wraith King with a stun there. And Jabs was looking for a hook in the mid lane, can't find it on the mid one, and he will continue to farm. Bottom lane again. Ice, 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 just still level four, still trying to play pretty close here, but. He just can't put that same threat on top of the Sark anymore at all. Very dangerous situation. Highly likely that Fata's going to be the one who cracks six first. Speaking of six, the level six comes out for the Death Prophet, holding the skill point currently for Nana. I would imagine he wants to use this exorcism pretty soon if he does skill it up early on, but uh, might hold the point still. Top lane, I think... Uh... Yeah, nothing happening right now. We do have the six on the Luna, though, so they're trying to create this threat here as Jabs rotates in, but there is a ward up on the high ground there, so they spot his rotation. Puppy and Ice Ice going toe-to-toe, -to -toe looking for the Fire Spirits. He's able to Icarus dive away in the meantime and gets out of trouble, and Fata gets back to his own Tier 1 tower as Jabs was looking for an angle with a hook, but they do a defensive ward on the high ground, uh, Secret do, so they, they've spotted out a lot of these rotations from Mineski in terms of diving under this Tier 1 tower on the top lane. Oh, he doesn't know, though. He's just charging. Yeah, so, oh my god, he actually barely got out of there. And they will try to maybe steal a stack with a Liquid Fire coming in from Ninja Boogie. Yeah. And the Illuminate gets a couple of the last hits for Yapsor. And he's already getting some decent farm. 18 last hits for this support keeper of the life for Yapsor who's just been in this top lane. Oh, and look at this, level 7 Nana still holding the point here. And you know what they want to do right now for Mineski. Yep. Start brute forcing this one down. He has the exorcism now. There's three heroes in this top lane. They've de-warded as well. And here comes the glyph. Can they fight this? There's no Ravage on Fada. They'll illuminate. And that makes it so, so hard. Look at the illuminate damage. They have to back up for now. And that's going to give you Ravage now because of those creeps too. 
and Fatsa now with the threat of the Ravage. I'm not sure if Mineski want to push into this too much further. They might just back off. This exorcism is still going for now, but there's not much left in terms of the duration. And look at the commitment uh, from the side of uh, Mineski versus Secret, right? It's just a, a blast from Yapsor, and that's it. Push them all back. Slark's farming bottom, Medusa's farming mid. In fact, Slark... Pounce? That was... Uh, he pounced? They're on the trying high to do it again, right? Where they set it up into a stun from Puppy, but not quite there once more. Puppy has, has done actually a lot of work on this Wraith King. He's roaming around. He's, gotten, he's been involved in a couple of kills, but... He doesn't have his level 6 yet, obviously still a little bit low. He's only got boots for now, but... Honestly, it feels surprising that he even has this many levels. He's just been kind of hanging around, I guess, a bit onto Ace now that Ace has that level 6. He feels a little bit better about leeching here. Yeah. Like, you'd think Gapsor might even have a bit more, right? Just a little bit greedier on the Coddle, but he's cleaning up a couple camps here. And uh, camps and stacks, probably going to be a little bit of the story of the mid-game here. So we do have a Medusa, uh, we have a Coddle, and we have a Luna. So yeah. everyone's stacking Ancients, farming some creeps. We'll be waiting for those long cooldowns, and otherwise it's going to be just a lot of farming here, for the most part. And uh, we'll see with that Ravage. They did go for the phase boots on Fata. He also has Soul Ring, so that's the new common build. The phase Soul Ring is a word in the off lane. And this Tide Hunter is uh, looking to put some damage here in this top lane. So, Trent, where do you commit this Ravage? What do you do with Fata here now that he's level 6? Where do you try to find a fight? Oh, his buddies aren't really ready. Slark takes a little while to come online. Maybe one of the downsides of this year. We don't see him too much anymore, but he really wants that Shadow Blade. Doesn't really want to move in the lane until he has it, uh, especially if he just has a nice happy time. Sometimes maybe you're forced out, right? There's too much pressure in the lane or something, and you either have to go jungle a little bit. Used to be one of the benefits of Iron Talon for this hero, or otherwise you have to try and set up a gank with your supports. In this game, he's happy. He's totally fine down here. No threat at all from a Phoenix, so... He's just going to slowly work on that. And Fata's in the same situation, Top. Feels safe enough with the phase boots and kind of protects himself with the threat of Ravage Pounds, TPs. Dark Pact. They have the Supernova and Icarus dive. And now they're reinforcements oh, coming from Mineski. Supernova coming out and Puppy is in trouble. So too is Ace. He's got to pop the Shadow Dance. Look at those blocks from Jabs. Can Ace get on the hook? Just misses. And he's got the Pounce ready. The Icarus dive coming through. They're diving the tower. The Dark Pact coming in. And they get the kill. A double for Mushi with the Lucent Beam coming at the tail end of the engagement. What a great bait coming out from Ice Ice to dive over to the rest of his team. Sometimes with offlaners, you can kind of tell when they're baiting plays like that because maybe they play super safe the rest of the time, right? And you're like, okay, why is this guy suddenly so close to me? Like, why has he just been doing this? Um, and you kind of get tipped off a bit. But Ice Ice has just been on top of the Slark the whole game, even at like 10% HP or something like that. So it's not as unusual for him to be uh, in a place that maybe looks more like a bait. And that time, very good rotation coming in there from the Luna and the Pudge, cleaning up and really helping out that lane. Yeah, two big kills, getting Ice 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 back into it. They drop a ward, mid one, very close to getting hooked by Jabs. Jabs still trying to chase, trying to find a good juke for mid one. Now Puppy rotating in. They get off the Mystic Snake and Ace is here, and they want to clean up at least one of these, and they will get Jabs. He might deny himself, no. Illuminate clips him, he's done. Very nice kill there, looking for Ice Ice Ice, but again, has the dive ready. No Supernova, trying to fight onto Puppy. Puppy's trying to bait this a little bit, but there's not much he can do. Wraith Fire Blast coming out, now he's gonna run. Ace is here with the Pounce, but there's the Icarus dive, and he will be fine. They'll go for the TP, and he will be able to make it safely away. And just making a little bit of space for Mushi here. They're gonna get that vision in deep. They've got it in both parts of the jungle here, so they can kind of spot what the Medusa's up to and uh, allow Mushi to feel safe while he farms. Meanwhile, TP away there. Maybe trying to force a Ravage there as Ninja Boogie exits out of that top lane, but Fatha not going to throw it. It's important to know that Mushi did get that double kill in the bottom lane. So now, not only you know is he super farmed, he's got a Mask of Madness, he also gets those two kills, and he is now top of the net worth by about 100 ahead of mid one who is on that Medusa. And they have a lot of stacks. You can see the ancient stacks that Nana just walked by. So they're setting up to have a very good late game here for Mineski with this Luna picked up now. Yeah, the two of them feeling quite delirious there, Luna and Medusa. They go mad with farm here. I mean, and respective side. So you, who wants to get aggressive? Can I get some heroes, you know, crossing the river here? Are we just going to, I think we're just going to do this the whole time. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of stacking yeah. and farming and it's just going to be great. going to be a good old time. They'll take the stacks for the Death Prophet, Mushi sitting bottom, I think he wants to maybe make something happen. They actually have a decent ward that'll spot vision onto the Slark here in a moment, and of course onto Puppy. Yeah, we haven't even talked about yet, uh, that yet though, but you're placing these deep wards and uh, it's up against the Slark, so he's kind of moving from camp to camp and he goes, oh hey, uh, where'd my ulti go? So, uh, easy for the supports to come through in D ward, really helps out in the overall team economy too, because you're not missing as many sentries. Now, they're TPing up, looking for Ninja Boogie, who's dropped the Macro Pyre. He is in some serious trouble. And uh, he's doing a lot of damage to Ace, but good Ice Path. One more auto attack. Dude, the Pounce. space. There it is. <laughs> and some space creation for sure. Uh, in the meanwhile, though, as they have all this vision on these heroes while they're chasing around the Jakiro, that allows them to rotate fully around the tower, completely encircled. And that makes any sort of a defense here from Secret pretty much impossible. You know, you want this Coddle to maybe show up and try and start blasting away the wave, but you just can't do that up against this Luna as well as the Egg. 
and they still have yet to use Ravage on Secret. Obviously, like you talked about, they want that Shadow Blade for the Slark. And uh, he is very close. In fact, he should have enough money for it here with the Claymore now up and ready to go. He will buy it. It's in his stash. Mid one in the meantime is pushing pretty well into this tier one tower in the mid lane. And Nana has to force him back. But uh, Mineski, they're starting to get a, a footing in this game. They have 6k on this Luna. They're starting to get some towers in the bottom lane. It's starting to come together for this dire team here, Trent. Yeah, we'll see if they can keep that up by putting this pressure and rotating into the wards of the mid lane. Uh, their own tower is low, as you were just pointing out. So they wouldn't mind now transitioning from the Radiant jungle in towards that mid, try and put some pressure, at least force those rotations, and then they could uh, maybe get someone up top two to try and deal with Fada. They or found the hook, mid one gonna get caught, they've got the dual breath, Macro Pyre, Sunray, Ice Pat, everything used to get the kill, and they will find it. Oh, Dead he's got no mana too. Into the Exorcism, we saw the same exact move last game, try to take this tier one tower. They know Fada doesn't have enough mana to do anything, he can't like TP in and Ravage or anything like that, so he's kind of forced to keep pressuring this, and Ice's Ice feels confident enough to just come up here, but we'll see if that's his undoing here with the newly unveiled Shadow Blade. Yeah, Ice, Ice, Ice needs to be careful, they will take that tier one tower. In the meantime, there's the Gush, he's got the dive, the Ravage is there, they got the kill, nicely done from Secret. Can they get out though, is the question. TPs are cancelled and only Jabs is there and now they can turn back around and look for this tower or for Jabs and we'll see if that's going to be the case. I'm not sure how long Secret want to stay now that you're going to back up for now. Yeah, maybe not an ideal Ravage because all your gang's a Phoenix, but he also knows that Exorcism just went down. So there, that's the time that Manessi's not going to want to be aggressive. So that's the time you want to use your Ravage. Um, it, it's highly unlikely that they're going to be able to do something really active with the Exorcism in the 10 seconds uh, between that and the, the Ravage. It's actually about 30, but still. Uh, Good play from Fada, I think. Yeah, just get a single kill. Try and enable your Slark a bit more right after that Shadow Blade, getting the Echo Saber. Gives more room for Medusa as well to farm in the jungle. Um, still still a net worth, and again, Mushi, we know how good this guy is at farming, and he continues to do so. 7.8k net worth, and he continues to get his next item. He actually went for the Dragonlance first, instead of going for something like a Yasha into a Mantis style. So he'll grab that and have some extra tankiness and range to work with on the Luna. Meanwhile, it'll be the four staff first there for mid one, so he'll be hopping away there. Helps out against Pudge, helps out against Phoenix. Just get yourself away from the egg, uh, and maybe even saving some allies from some of those follow-ups from Jakiro or something. You might need it. Mid one now down to the low ground. The hook just missing jabs. So close. Not quite though. A bit risky there with the mask of madness, but extra move speed. Had he got caught, and maybe he can't get off his ultimate or something like that, and just gets bursted down, but. They will continue their push in the bottom lane here. Every threat available for the Dire, except for Exorcism, which means DP's not even going to bother showing up. She's going to push out the mid lane. Yeah, we talked about Yapster, but he does have a full four staff. Ace almost caught another by another hook there. Macro Pyre dropped down. But yeah, again, Yapster, we, we haven't seen him too much, but he's just been farming in the jungle, it feels like. He's a full four staff, now working on an Aghanim Scepter for the Keeper of the Light. And uh, they need that four step to keep some of these heroes alive. The Icarus dive coming in. They've got the oh, supernova geez. available. The Wraith Fire Blast. The tower hits, oh, and he just God. gets it off. Ice, ice, ice. <laughs> Maybe one tick away. Oh, calculated. Uh, yeah. That, he totally knew. Yeah. <laughs> Not a worry in the world. 100% fine. Uh, oh, meanwhile, Death Prophet. And yeah, almost gone silence. on, but her ultimate just appears. Puppy, he does have the reincarnation to work with. They're going to keep blasting here. Now Fada's TPing in. No Ravage available still here for a moment at the very least. Now Ace coming from the back lines. They take down the tower. Jab's in trouble. Luminate coming in. Moshi now looking for an Eclipse potentially. They pop the Exorcism. Ace is trying to run away. He's split from oh, the rest of the team. He's dragging them all. Yeah, and here comes Fada coming right back in. Still no Ravage. Ice, Ice, Ice using his Icarus dive. They've got to leave. There's the right Fire Blast. Phoenix in trouble. Good Ice Path, but Ice, Ice, Ice still in trouble. Illuminate will grab the kill. Can they find more? Good team. TP's out from Mineski, so they don't lose too much there, but they will still lose two heroes in the process. Well, running away with Exorcism, not generally a good sign. Uh, I guess maybe they thought they were going to have more severe losses or something like that, so oh, she popped it as a find threat. Ace but... through to the perfect time, but Ace does have the pounce. He's going to hit it. They need the heroes to get here in the meantime. There's going to oh, be the Spirit Siphon. They it get the Silence the off, and they would have used the Ravage perhaps there to secure that kill, but the Haste Rune gets him out of trouble. Still, though, Secret will move towards the Tier 1 Tower in the mid lane to try to take this down. The Glyph will go. They'll drop the Macro Pyre. They don't have Exorcism. Ravage is back up. TP's coming in from Ice, Ice, Ice. They're going to try oh, to wrap the it. There it is. And they'll drop it onto three. They've got Fata in deep. They're going to use the uh, hook. It misses completely from Jabs. Now Puppy's still with a reincarnation. Fata getting low. The Sunray now missing as he gets forced away. Puppy's going to use that reincarnation here in just a moment. And they will get Fata as well. He's going to get dropped down for 45. Dismember is there. And Secret are backing. Puppy's been left alone. The Ice Path coming in. The Spirit Siphon on top of it. Illuminate. Oh, Yapsor. Blew away that poor freaking Jakiro. Uh, a little though. bit of a rebate there. Oh, top. Slark chasing. Is, can he get this? The Shadow Blade comes out. He's got the Eclipse. Oh, There's like the Dark Tag. Trying to fake it. Lucent Lucid Beam coming in and Ace. I don't know if he's going to chase this, and he will not now that the rest of Mineski are on their way. Reinforcements. Yeah, you can see Mushi well prepared for this match. He's kind of used to it. 
trying to pump fake the ultimate a little bit there with the Eclipse, trying to force out the Shadow Dance from the Slark, but Ace also holding his nerve there. And they'll both just walk away. And we do have that Midas now complete for the Phoenix. They'll go for the GPM, so he wants that Mad Cash to go with his Midas. Now, where, now this is where he starts getting real scary, getting those big items, something like a Sheep's Guard, for, for example. But a couple of good moments there, Trent. They keep their Tier 1 or tier one Tower alive for Mineski. They start getting a lot of items. They get a couple of kills from Ushi. He continues to farm up. This is starting to get pretty good, but there is still a 2k advantage for Secret, interestingly enough. Yeah, they now shift the momentum a bit, though, in terms of the ultimates. So there's a pretty big gap now between the Exorcism and the Ravage, and they could maybe consider using Ninja Exorcism Bogey for Roche. In trouble, trying to get four hook spot to save him. It doesn't look like it's going to be there. Japs doesn't even go for the hook save, as he knows he's dead already, and Yapsor will clean that kill up. Yeah, Yapsor is really starting to pick it up. He was a little bit low to start, maybe less so than he usually is on these uh, greedier supports, but he's finding that space now. And as uh, his Slark starts to move around, maybe angling a bit more for kills, that means that he can find those empty lanes and just kind of show up there, push, hide in the trees, push again, and push himself in towards the Aghanim Scepter. He's going for the, I guess, what you consider standard at this point, four step into the Aghanim Scepter. Yep. Definitely popularized most by GH. Yep. The, while he's doing this, and while, of course, Ace is looking for kills... He just know. Yules for the last hit. What a baller. That's classic. Yeah. Hey, look, he's apologizing to the creep. It's, you know, he really loved that sorry chat wheel. Let me tell you, there's the get ready from some mail and then sorry from I've the I've heard the, uh, the whoops from whoops. Vata. Yeah, Mushi's about one. to maybe have a whoops. They need to stun. They don't have it. They won't be able to get the kill. Then nobody in the vicinity and Puppy, of course, not there in time for a Wraith Fire Blast. So, good attempt. But uh, and, and mid one has just kind of been farming and while all this chaos has been happening. He's just been taking stacks. He's been in the jungle for the most part. He is second in net worth, as you would expect for Medusa. And uh, he's 2,000 behind that of the Luna, though. So that is... Bit of an issue here for Secret. Will be smoke time here for all Mineski. No vision there from the Radiant. In terms of what they can see on the map right now, they are pushing the waves in pretty deep. You can see where mid one's sitting. Puppy kind of guarding a bit. And he's like, huh, where is Mineski? Uh, I'm at their tower. They were trying to help him. Oh, they missed the pounce. And he gets the force to the low ground as well. He's going to make it out. Everybody else was top, and now they're going to try to chase down mid one, who's in a lot of trouble. He's got a hurricane pike to use. They're going to try to silence him up. There's the sunray coming through. Good hurricane pike against Ice Ice Ice, but the Yule Scepter is there for Nana. And this should be a kill. He does have the ultimate. He will pop it, but he's going to try for the TP. I'm not sure he's going to make it through. He we'll will. Oh, mid one somehow makes it out with a beautiful play with that stone gaze. Wow, he held the Yules for so long until he knew the Pudge was in range. He's like, okay, I've got my Pudge now, so I don't have to worry about uh, any sort of a TP straight away from the Medusa, but sadly, Pudge not able to get through with that Stone Gaze. That was perfect timing. So, both carry players avoiding a gank narrowly, but they will survive and continue on here. And in terms of carry items, we have a Manta style coming first for the Luna, and mid one working on another item of his own. And uh, we'll see how this game shapes up. We haven't yet seen Roshan. Um, maybe this changes right now as Mineski are heading into the pit. As I say that, so... <laughs> we have extras and possibilities. Uh, we have Ravage as well, though, from the Radiant. So, yeah, we're just 5 on 5 Dota, but good vision here from the Dire. They spot exactly what the Radiant are up to. There is Ravage available. He would love to try and burst down Ice Ice Ice, but obviously a very difficult this target. This Exorcism is done. They're going to be able to get off Ravage. Maybe, no, not in time. And that will be the Aegis claimed by Mushi and the Eclipse. That's the... Re reincarnation use at the very least. Puppy's just going to be the martyr for the cause, it looks like. Maybe they're going to try to fight this. They'll take down this kill with the Illuminate. Now coming in. Ravage coming out. They've caught Nana. He can't get out of the pit at this point. And he's going to fall. He'll use himself up for now. The buyback coming in. That'll be from Ninja Boogie, but it's still two dead already from Mineski. Icarus Dive coming through from Ice Ice. They've lost Fada on the Radiant side, but Ace is still there along with Mid One. They want to continue to chase. They've got the Echo Saber. They've got the Pounce. They've got the kill. A double for Ace, who is now dominating. And they somehow clean house. They're looking for Mushi. Great force from Mid One. The Hurricane Pike, though, from Mushi pushing him back and keeping him safe, and they cannot find that Luna who does have the Aegis. He will make it out unscathed, but for the most part, a great fight for Secret there. Felt really greedy for Mineski. Trying to tempt that when they know the ultimates are all up. I, I guess they just had way more confidence in their own team fight in the pit, but uh, not able to grab Fada when he kind of moved in there right away with the Wraith King, kind of slowing things down, and then that allowed them to come back in for the engagement. And still a win there for Secret, despite not coming away with the Aegis. Now they're starting to gain this advantage, a 4k lead, and things are going to, going to get a lot harder for Mineski as there's about to be an Aghanim Scepter for this Keeper of the Light here in about 50 gold, which makes things a lot harder in terms of keeping these waves pushed out. We'll see what Mineski can do. Obviously, Mushi's still farming very well, but... Yeah, he'll have the Manta now for the uh, blind from the Caudal, which is always nice, but... Even that might not save you, right? Sometimes you Manta a bit earlier on in the fight, and plus he's just going to be being uh, bounced around by the Blinding Light. Could put you into a precarious p position here. And uh, we also haven't even talked about the fact that the farm increase that can come out now, right? Yapsor can just be pulling people across the map, keeping his Medusa well farmed, maybe uh, keeping up some easy ancient stacks with the uh, constant ultimate form of the Illuminate. 
Maybe this is where a map control comes into play as well. Getting that split pushing going like you were talking about. Dragging people across with the recall. And just keeping the waves pushed out as much as possible. Another kind of awkward game for jabs. Just doesn't, uh, the punch doesn't feel like it's quite on the same level as a lot of the other position four heroes are used to seeing compared to Dota. Right. Can be successful early, can bully a lot with the rot, but it's so hard to make these mid game plays. Yeah, there's been a lot of missed chances with his hook. Trying to find ace this time. Spirit Siphon, Yule Scepter. This should be a kill with this member. Maybe they've got the blinding light. Thada coming in. Hook will just miss and ace will make it out. And now Mineski, they need to back up themselves, get towards their shrine. But ace has been saved by Secret. Yeah, Blinding Light is just so insanely good these days. Yeah. It's one of the most versatile spells that you can use. You can use it for big saves like that. You can use it to like catch someone who's still trying to run away. And it's on a really short cooldown. Uh, 16 for now, but then once it gets a little higher, it also get up to 12. So, excellent it. play from Yapsor. And he can also be just spell. saving with 4-staff if he wants to, too. Yeah. Yapsor making some plays here. What is Fada building? He looks like he's trying to build into either a force or blink next, one of the two. And uh, looks like he has a pipe done. I think the Courier's bringing it out now. It'll keep things a little bit easier for him to survive against a lot of this magic damage, but uh, Blink Dagger, Blink Ravage, he knows he needs it. He knows he needs the initiation power, and I'll see if he can't find something with it. Yeah, drums in the pipe. He almost hits 500 MS when he's moving around with the phase boots on, so doesn't need that mobility item quite yet, but he's really looking to get into it. Puppy trying to de-ward. They have another sentry to work with. Even though Nana took one down, they're still going to get de-warded one way or the other. And uh, Secret are going to back off. I mean, they want to wait out the ages, I feel like, for the most part. And it's still a couple minutes before that is gone. And they could just continue to farm, continue to create space with Coddle, continue to have the Medusa just sit in the jungle and get up to where he, she wants to be personally. Yeah, this hasn't felt too good for Mineski over the past five minutes or so. Usually when you get the roast, you feel like you can be the ones pressuring and everything, but they're just not quite at that point. They got a couple items they need to wait on. They want that BKB, especially on the Death Prophet. And then Isis Ice would not hurt for him to finish out that Shiva's Guard. It's just so hard to deal with pushing into Yapsor. He just illuminates waves. They have really good wave clear on, on Secret. There's not much you can do if you're Mineski. Man, Poppy loves his Helms of the Dominator. Yeah, yeah I he saw can't he had get one. enough of this yeah. item, honestly. Every hero he plays. Who uh, needs a blink? He's got the Centaur Conqueror. I mean, this is this Centaur Conqueror is probably going to have some six stun or something. They're going to find Ninja Boogie. There's the Gus. Gush coming out. Ninja Boogie's going to throw up the Ice Path. Great Fire Blast. They've got the hook, but they don't want to go on Fada. It's probably not the target they want. Ninja Boogie's still in trouble. And uh, Mana Leak Dev and Ace will come clean this off with a, an auto attack or two and get himself a mega kill spree. And maybe this leads into a top tower, potentially. Let's see. Yeah, they just commit nothing. And then now you don't want to fight if you're Mineski, even though you have an Aegis. So again, sad times for them. It's about to dissipate two in another 30 seconds. So overall, it's just more secret Dota making this look easy. Yeah, making the right moves across the map. A tier two tower will fall. Ace has picked up his BKB along with all the other items coming out for secrets. And, uh, Really, the, the hope of Mineski now on Mushi. 17,000 net worth, very farm, but what is he going to be able to do in these engagements? Need some help. Again, they're going to just try and uh, force back some heroes here. Seems like they understand that Mineski are waiting on these big items because they're just pressuring and pushing to kind of see what the DP's up to. Try and force these rotations back home. <laughs> A little bit risky here from Ice Ice Ice. He nice just bounce back up. That was pretty, pretty nice from Yapsor. Glyph will go. Aegis is now gone, by the way. You just heard it reclaimed. They're actually going to get the kill onto Ice Ice Ice. They stunned him with a Wraith Fire Blast. The Gush came out, and that was more than enough to secure it. Wow. And now they're going to work in this Tier 3 tower. This is going to be a Tier 3 tower gone. Perhaps more. Ice 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 does have buyback, but it, it looks like Secret. They're not scared. They have the Ravage still. Mineski don't want to commit the extra sim. They want to try to defend this. Phoenix will buy back finally. There's the Magma Fire being dropped down. The Illuminate, the heal is so good. The split shot coming through. They've got the Supernova, but there's the Ravage coming out. They're going to find Ninja Boogie yet again, potentially getting low. They take down the Egg on the back lines as well. Ninja Boogie will escape for now. Nana trying to man fight as best as possible. This BKB going to work, but now it's down. Here comes the Eclipse, though, getting at least one kill. That's but just the reincarnation for now. And Mushi will be next. Manting will not save his life. They'll follow up with a double kill, getting it. Mushi dropped down. And this should be a buyback and it will be for Mushi and another kill on to Japs. They've taken the racks. They lose to no one for Secret other than the reincarnation from the Wraith King. And they are trying to finish the series off in style, taking down the full set of racks. They now have a Scotty as well on the Dusa. Ah, oh, and the giant fountain heal here from Yapsor as they go right back in. Yeah, they're just illuminating like crazy. They'll take another kill. They will hook Mushi back, but he's slowed up, and they're just going to work in the fountain. Will they die? They're thinking about it. Ace decides not to. Illuminate will come through, and they, they could just they <laughs> have to stay there longer. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> they get pushed back so long, but it looks like Secret are done bullying Mineski for now. They will TP home onto Fata. They'll clear out the waves and then back themselves up, and again, they lose absolutely nothing to Trent.
just feels like you kind of drop this lineup and you imagine like the best possible things that could happen. You have the Slark who doesn't get really harassed down. He's able to safely and easily get his Shadow Blade. Then he's across the whole map just setting up for easy kills. And uh, then you're allowing your Medusa to just farm, have a nice time. Your Coddle gets some good gold. Wraith King just kind of does his thing. I don't know. He rotates around a little bit during the, uh, <laughs> the early laning phase, right? He's just running around with some brown boots and he just picks up this puppy helm, but. It hasn't felt like there's been any resistance, really, from Ineski. Uh, it's kind of felt like that both games, honestly. Like, uh, it never feels like they're making aggressive moves. Just a couple times a game. Now Mushi Mushi, in yeah. trouble and killed and dead for 93 seconds with no buyback in secret. They're going to try to finish this one off. There are Tier 2 towers left in both the mid and the bottom lanes, which is good news. Otherwise, secret probably try to finish this game off a bit quicker, but uh, they might be able to survive a bit longer from Ineski here. We'll see. Just feels so like awkward for Maneski. Like, what's your ideal scenario to start a good fight for these for this team? Even in the mid game, right? You, you're just gonna like walk in the jungle and hope you get a good hook. That's the best case scenario, yeah, really. You like really put up a ward, you see someone farming a camp, and it's some big core. But if that doesn't happen. You have to lead with like an ice path or something like that, or maybe a Yules, and you just surround the person. But so you could have just outmaneuvered, outplayed, and it, it feels like just general map control has been the real theme of this series, where the waves are just constantly pushing in the side of Maneski. They're providing information for Secret, and they just walk around there and. They maybe have the scouting hero this game now for Ace, where he just roams around, does whatever he wants, invis. Just been dominating. Secret have hit their timings. Like you talked about, the lack of reliable disables for Mineski make this a lot harder. And this is a tough defense. Still no Mushi for 30. Sunray will go. Ice path, but mid one can continue to siege. From afar, Ace looking for pickoff, but he won't be able to find it, I don't believe, anyway. He's up to the north. Jump in, Ravage from Fata hitting on to pretty much everybody. The Centaur Conqueror is down. They're going to get this kill at the very least onto the Death Prophet. They've already dropped three, or rather two. Looking for the third in Ninja Boogie. They will find it a double kill for Ace, and that should lead into this tier three, the Rax, and perhaps the game trend. Yeah, Ice and can do nothing but watch. Kind of feels like most of his game, honestly. Uh, didn't, didn't feel that strongly about the pick. The, the Slark is just such a ridiculous count. You can see in so many of the fights, he's just dark backing. He's just going straight on the egg. He's not being uh, like taunted by any of these other heroes or anything like that. It'll just be him and maybe the Coddle punching away on top of the egg, and Ice is Ice now struggling at 0, 8, and 6. So, Puppy will be up front. He's got the reincarnation still. Ace is in. There's the Supernova. It's not going to survive for much longer. Ice 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 is dead for 60 seconds. Bushi will pop the Eclipse, spotted taking some damage, but here comes Ace, they've got the Gush. The pushback from the Absort, the GG is called. Secret will move on, Mineski eliminated from CD 4.0. Yep, good luck in the final, says Ninja Boogie, as Mineski will be done, Secret. Very nicely done. Very nicely done indeed, so. Man, I don't know, I, I thought this was it. I thought this was the tournament where I expected the Mineski, you know? It feels like they're always dominant.